Just a quick disclaimer guys before I start the video, I just want to say that I'm not like an anti Overwatch League or anti Blizzard games or anything. I'm an esports fan and I want to see every project that is out there being successful. I think that Overwatch is an awesome game, but sometimes when stuff don't add up or stuff don't make sense to me, I have to just lay out and just express myself on stuff that are important to me. But this video is not about saying Overwatch sucks, League of Legends is better, or Counter Strike is doing better. Every game has its own files and like problems. Don't worry, League of Legends is far from being perfect as far as League is concerned. But I feel like right now everyone is talking about Overwatch League and I thought it would an amazing video just to say and just to share my opinion on stuff like that. So what up everyone, my name is Zonobra and today I'm going to talk about the Overwatch League topic. It's a very controversial topic because stuff don't really make any sense, at least to me. I've done a lot of research on Overwatch, I work for a company that needs to know stuff about games that work and that don't work, I follow Twitch activities a lot, I just am aware of what's going on usually in esports and what games are blowing up, what games are flopping, what games aren't looking good, and I've been doing this for several years now. And when I saw Overwatch, Overwatch League coming up with like the whole data of like 20 million buy-ins, stuff for CDs and stuff, I was like, okay, this is amazing, right? But maybe I missed something. So I started to do some research. I started to do a podcast with an Overwatch journalist. If you guys haven't seen the podcast with Patrick Guerin, go check it out. But I've learned more about the case and I cannot stop thinking about what what the hell is going on so basically if you don't know what's going on guys is that overwatch is trying to build a franchise league with traditional sports people coming in to help asking for 20 million dollars for a permanent slot and basically you there's like cd based stuff so basically right now nrg owns the san francisco area just to attract um, local crowd. This on paper seems to be amazing. Everything on paper is always nice and shiny. There's always unicorns and rainbows on it, but if you look deeper into it, if you look what actually the community is saying, things just don't add up. Like, things do not add up. So, I want to talk about the price first. The first thing is that Blizzard is asking you, uh, team organization, you CEO of TSN, Conan, whatever, 20 million dollar for a spot and i think a city for overwatch league just just an idea okay overwatch is a game that is about two year old sold like crazy but an esports that is about to be a failure world cup 2016 was something that was new original people were hyped around it the whole country thing was really nice then we knew that korea is gonna actually smash on everyone and that competition was not gonna be really nice and ever since the last year world cup nothing happened like some local tournaments some bullshit tournaments some just like non hype tournaments with a very low stagnant viewership and that has been going on for years and like even like more than a year so this for me is a problem is that where is this 20 mil coming from if you want an idea of standards today NALCS which is the biggest league in the entire esport industry um, is asking for 10 million dollars for um, a permanent spot as as you can see like we don't know and I don't know but I'm pretty sure all the big organization like TSN, Cloud9, uh, Eco Fox, all that stuff, they're all gonna go and jump into this opportunity because Talion is a reasonable price, TSM is making hella money, Cloud9 is also making a lot of money. They wanna have a problem with that because they already know that, well, people like an LCS, people like League of Legends, like the data is here, number goes up, it might have gone down a little bit because well the league system is fucked up, but when it comes to standard, like League of Legends is here and Overwatch is like way down here. It's a, it's a good investment and LCS has always high people, like they have tremendous fan base, uh, they have charismatic players, they have just good branding overall. But the fact that those same organizations that have millions of dollars don't jump into Overwatch is for me clearly a sign that like even the biggest members of the table aren't really sure about what's happening. There's a lot of people that are unsecure about what's happening with Overwatch League. Kespa doesn't even trust Blizzard and is just like stepping out. People that they hired are stepping out. A lot of teams are stepping out. And it's like, for me, it's this is the sign. It's like, 
I've seen what Overwatch is saying us. I, I'm I'm looking at news from like uh, stuff like BBC News and stuff. They think that it's going to be bigger than Premier League. I'm like, what is going on? Like, do you guys? Eat? I feel like the investors have been told stuff about the game that are meant for people that don't understand esports, and they just threw money like that. They just threw money like that at something they don't even know about. And for me, it's very very scary. Another thing is that. Overwatch is a game that is working super hard, right? Like, a lot of people are playing it. It's like, it's it's hardcore gamers going there. People are spending hours on it. Just like League of Legends, right? But the thing is that, whereas Blizzard is very good at making extremely uh, addictive game, if we can call it addictive, like, I don't mean to say, like, video games are addictive or whatever, they're not specifically good at making good esports so hear me out this is an argument that i've been saying for a while and a lot of people are like telling me that this is not right and this is not this is just not wrong if you think about like the history of blizzard and how much they actually invested in esports it's very it really begun where Riot games started to show like some balls and started to take some risk in it Blizzard is a multi-billion dollar company that could have developed esports on its own full force at first place, but they already like they were always very skeptical and they were like, we can just sell hella games, we can just we're not gonna make a free to play, we need to sell like they always like money profit profit profit. It was a huge like it's a it's a money machine. StarCraft 2 has died because well Blizzard had poor management on it, and I'm basically saying that the game is already dead, but it's not obviously, but. Blizzard hasn't done a lot for StarCraft. Hearthstone is a great game that could have won very nice, but because of the business model being changed, a lot of players are just be like, fuck this. I mean, the, the game sucks now. If you see the decks that people have to play in Hearthstone, if you know anything about Hearthstone, you'll understand that it is not even a good game anymore. It's just basically luck and, and just, it's just disgusting to watch. Uh, same thing with Heroes of the Storm. It's literally like, Heroes of the Storm is literally like, oh, we're going to try to make something for League of Legends players that are fans of Blizzard content, and we'll see what happens. At the end of the day, even they abandon the whole project, and they're not doing anything about it. And if you're a fan, I'm sorry, but all these events that you see are kind of bullshit when you think about it. And all the other games are just not esports related. World of Warcraft is a little bit, but obviously nothing is happening there. So just... Just to tell you my point is that Blizzard doesn't have a history of being successful in esports. Uh, there are in Hearthstone because it's a very popular game, people got really into it, they got very charismatic players in it, but it's still not, it's not the number one in biggest events. If you have to compare Dota 2, League of Legends, CSGO, Hearthstone, Overwatch, well, Hearthstone and Overwatch will be last. And this is super interesting. When Overwatch came, it was an amazing game, right? But there was some feedbacks around the esports. Last year, people told, okay, the spectator mode sucks. Me as a viewer, I mean, I have no idea what's happening. Some shoutcaster have no idea what they're saying because, and I don't blame them. Like I used to be a shoutcaster for League of Legends. I don't blame them. When I see Overwatch, and if I was seeing myself shoutcasting this, I would be like, "There's so much going on. I'm gonna lose my mind." Overwatch is a game that is messy, okay, and it needs to be organized in a way that. You can watch it and understand it. Your brother that doesn't know about Overwatch can watch it. And your mom that doesn't understand it can watch it. This is how it works. Tomorrow, if I go to NBA, if I go to an NBA match, I go with my mom, my dad, my grandma, uh, I don't know, my dog. Everyone will understand the game, right? But Overwatch isn't a game like that. Unfortunately, it isn't, right? Contract is a little bit simpler. Uh, League of Legends is a bit more d difficult, but Overwatch is something that is impossible to follow with the current spectator mode. That whole thing being said, that whole share of thoughts about what's going on with Overwatch League is for me, there's like a lot of things to settle. I think that Overwatch League will never be a success and will actually be the biggest flop of esport history if things don't change before the launch. If they don't have a new spectator mode. If they don't let people have a charismatic personality, if they don't introduce the biggest players, if we just don't know what's going on, if they have to communicate, we don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. Who are the biggest players? Who is like the best Genji in the world? Like, I want to get hyped. Today, Overwatch League, yesterday actually, like, no, two days ago, Overwatch League launched a Twitter account and posted a hype picture, being retweeted by every Blizzard handle. 
the video had 2,000 retweets, 2,000 retweets, 6,000 likes in 24 hours. It was retweeted by 2.2 million followers, Overwatch account, Blizzard account that has millions and millions of followers. 2,000 retweets, guys. People saw it and they did not retweet. That means that the hype is not here, guys. The hype is not here, and if you see like comment section, if you see how people talk on uh, Thorin Files videos, how even fans of Overwatch like they're not even understanding how things are going on. Like the only thing I have to say is like, what the fuck is going on, guys? I think I think what's gonna happen, and I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen is that if things don't change, if Blizzard isn't building right now a new spectator mode that is like kick ass. The first day of the of the Overwatch League, when you're gonna have all those teams and all those like production levels, scenery, and all that bullshit that nobody cares in esports, you're gonna see a hype. You're gonna see like maybe a hundred thousand viewers at first. You're gonna see one match, two match, and then you're gonna see like it's not gonna go above twenty, thirty thousand viewers or even ten thousand viewers. Guys, I promise you that. This is going to be the biggest flop in esports history if they don't change shit. Just to tell you an example, here's an article of BBC News called Overwatch Bigger Than the Premier League. So who actually reads BBC News, okay? BBC News is read by who? Your dad, maybe your mom, maybe the guy who just put 20 million on the table for a fucking team. And this is what they say. So... Its developer Activision Blizzard has just announced the first seven teams, owners for the forthcoming league. It believes in time, the tournaments could prove more lucrative than the UK Premier League, football's highest earning competition. Yes, yes, of course, no, of course, yeah. Overwatch being more, like, really, dude? Really, like, you actually wrote that and you click publish? Really? Premier League, where soccer is like soccer football, is the biggest hype in the whole world. Where there's like years and years of legacy, of history, and players are being paid millions to play. You're going to compare that to Overwatch that is asking $20 million per spot, which is peanuts for players at the Premier League. And where you don't have any viewers. Like, I want to see what the viewership are at Premier League, and I want to see the viewership of Overwatch. And to give you an example, this month, guys, Overwatch has uh, 30,000 average concurrent uh, uh, viewers, divided into 1,300 average channels on Twitch. This, my friend, is a horrible data. Just to give you an example, for the same month, for League of Legends, we had 117 Average CCTV across 1,600 channels. This is not a game that is going to beat Premier League at all. And this is just the first paragraph of the article from BBC News. They always say, Several of the successful bidders have made their mark with traditional sports team and the buy-in price has not been shipped. The BBC understands the right cost $20 million uh, per squad. For that, owners only promised, like, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we don't care about that. The fast-paced cartoon, like, shooter, uh, both players and spectators. Are you serious? The fast-paced cartoon, like, shooter, was designed to appeal both players and spectators? Like, do you even know Overwatch? Have you ever... Look, even the picture here, like, do you even know what's going on here? There's a rage gorilla. There's a guy doing yoga in the middle of the picture. There's, a, like, a turret. There's hella colors. Hella things going on. Explosions and stuff. You're gonna tell me that this is a design game for spectators? Like, please. Like, please. Like, this is just to show how I think... I think Blizzard is starting to hide and... Hide from the bad side, from the ugly side of Overwatch, and it's just ignoring the fact that this game is not going to blow up. Like, Blizzard, there is no hype around Overwatch. People aren't hyped about Overwatch League. And this is something you need to understand, guys. The minute you guys going to launch the, the, the program, the minute we're going to see the spectator mode is just unviewable, is the minute people are just going to leave and never come back. So let's just go back to the article. Unlike most esports competition, each team will be best in a different major city to help owners attract home crowds. This, I think, is one of the best points of this entire thing. I love the fact that I love the fact that everything is uh, locally based. Like, okay, this team is San Francisco, this team is LA, this team is Shanghai. I think this is really nice. I honestly think it does. But, for example, NRG is supposed to represent San Francisco. I live in San Francisco. 
why would I be an R NRG fan? Like, I don't know what makes, like, attracts me to San Francisco. Am I, is it going to be, like, a stadium where I can see them? Like, what is going to be the attach of it, you know? Like, what NBA does with, like, the Warriors here is insane. There's people, like, there's fans of them everywhere. There's bars just for them. There's parades when they win. There's all the stuff that makes you want to bound with the team and be a fan, right? So, this is just a side questioning. I just wonder what they're going to actually do to attract the local crowds. But all, all like all around, I think it's great. I think that me coming from France as well, uh, I will most likely support France as a team. And it could be nice for me to be like, oh, how are the French team doing? I don't have to remember names of teams, etc., etc., or even names of players. So that's actually a really nice point for Overwatch. So, uh, at the pursuit of being a consumer brand, a sponsor, rather than the kind of games-related business usually associated with esports. So, I understand that. I understand that, of course, this is going to attract some big uh, brands. We're talking like Coca-Cola, uh, Axe, uh, Geico, all those people that sponsor TSM and all that stuff. All the big, all the big dogs. Uh, Nissan and all that stuff, for example. But, the question is that, is, why would I sponsor... Overwatch League, when I can probably sponsor League of Legends and NLCS, which is the number one esports right now, like the number one esports scene all throughout the year, for almost like half the price. Like you, you like I, I want you guys to understand. Like I don't mean, I don't mean to be mean. I don't want to bash the whole community of Overwatch, but I just want to, I just want to point out the ignorance around it. And they're just assuming that because they have hella players, they're going to have hella viewers. And it doesn't work like that. It does not work like that. Right, games? Okay, so let me just tell you. Let, let's just start with the article. For me, what's important here is what I'm seeing uh, in a matter of times. Riot Games has done what it's doing right now, aka franchising, in one scene out of like five or six in seven years. Today is the se the season seven of LCS, seven season seven years that has been going on, and Riot finally decides that for season eight, so the eight, year eight, they're gonna start franchising any LCS at a ten million dollar buy-in. Seven years, seven years of development, hard work, stuff, just stuff going on. Uh, organization getting branding. Uh, players super, being super good, Faker showing he's the best, Bjergsen uh, showing personality, uh, double lift trash talking and showing some personality and like just uh, charism, like that really counts, right? People get attached to that. People get attached to Bjergsen, to Sneaky, to double lift, to Faker. People like people are just in the vibe. Blizzard is trying to do more in a matter of month, okay? And for me, is that it's literally what I said to Patrick Garen on the podcast. It's too big, too soon. Some people might think that too big, too, there's no such thing as too big, too soon. But the thing is that Blizzard is like is like that. Like it's the way they work on stuff. They just go too big, too soon. Like they they don't know what the hell is going on. And I this is so sad. Like you're gonna f like who who had time here to become an Overwatch fan? Who got time to be, uh, I mean, Seagull fan, but like Seagull is a huge streamer, so if you click on Overwatch, you're going to see him first, you're going to get to know the guy, but who actually got to know his plays in Overwatch stuff? And and for me, it's like, ugh, it's like, it just doesn't make sense, like, come on, guys, like, doing something in month that another company has been done, has been trying to do in years, is something that must show you guys how fast stuff are going for Overwatch, and how it's just unnecessary. So, I mean, guys, honestly, I'm questioning a lot of stuff. I'm honestly questioning a lot of stuff. I do want Overwatch to succeed, guys. I really, really do. Like, I want to see esports growing. I want to see big companies throwing millions. I want to see players driving Ferraris. I, I, I want to see that. I want to see that happen. I want esports to be the best entertainment industry in the world. But when I see something that looks wrong to me, when I see something that doesn't make sense to me, uh, and when I see the community talk on Reddit, on comment section of videos, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Facebook groups, and I see people just being mad at Blizzard for not listening to them, for not changing the spectator mode, for not doing this, for not doing that, for not doing this and that, it, it just saddens me. Like, I feel like it's gonna launch, 
people are just going to be like, oh, I'm wondering what's going on. Like, they're going to open their computer, go to Twitch, go to Facebook Live, go to Twitter, whatever. And they're going to see that it's the same shit. Same shit that they hated last year. Nothing has changed. And, and they're just never going to come back. They're going to leave and they're never going to come back. And for me, not only it saddens me for the game, it saddens me for Blizzard's reputation. That is a company that I love. Blizzard has built games that actually like shaped my interest and love for video games. Uh, and I see this, and it, I'm like, yo, like this is this is not gonna go well. Like you gotta stop. Like you you gotta you gotta redefine stuff. You gotta just sit down and chill a little bit and see where you've gone and where you're going and stuff. So. Like, please, like, listen to this video, and if you listen to this video that far, like, thank you so much, but know that my intent is not to bash anyone, I'm not telling you that this port is better than this port, like, this is not my point, I'm just trying to show my confusion, my questionings, and my overall, my, my scared feelings about the result of this, when I said that this could be the biggest flop of esport history, or even entertainment history because there's so much hype there's so much investors there's people from uh there's people from baseball coming in i i honestly mean it like i mean it if they, if things are staying stagnant if they don't introduce a new spectator mode if they don't make stuff easier for us uh, if they don't do like there's so many things but it's like uh, this video can go on and on and then i'm going to start repeating myself and i hate that nothing if nothing changes there's no reason why this game will succeed Numbers don't lie, and numbers have been super low all throughout the year. Blizzard has tried to hype us on on smaller tournaments, on bigger tournaments, and it just didn't work. It really didn't work. So, guys, I want to thank you so much for watching. Please, guys, this this video is not me telling you what to think. It is a conversation, so I want to hear what you think. Are you guys hyped about Overwatch League? Are you guys not hyped about Overwatch League? And also... Go to my Twitter, and one of my latest tweet is a poll asking you if Overwatch League is going to be a success, yes or no. Just drop a vote there, and maybe we can go back into this in an article or another video and discuss about it. Right now, it has like 10 votes, so it's not really relevant. Most people think it will be a success out of 10, but it's not really like relevant. So yeah. Make sure you tell me something that you think I'm, I I said wrong or something that I said was stupid in the comment down below. Uh, and just share your opinions. Share your opinions. Tell, tell me why I'm wrong. Tell me why what I said didn't make sense. I really want to learn more. And I just want to know more. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, thank you so, so much for watching. If you watch from here, it was a long video. But I think it needed to be said. Again, guys, I don't say I have as much credibility as someone like... Thorin or Monte Cristo or Richard Lewis. I'm a small guy in this industry. I make content because I'm passionate about it. But I felt like I needed to share my opinion and my feelings about this whole situation. And and yeah, I hope you guys liked it. I hope you find it interesting. Thank you so much, guys, for being here. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to subscribe for more, please go ahead and do it. Um, and I'll see you for the next one, guys. Peace.